and autos in the greater Dallas area. Yeehaw! The movie is called Delivery Disaster. Uh-oh. We open in media res. A mailman drives a truck full of packages down in uh, an endless American neighborhood as a pack of rabid dogs chase behind. Now, these dogs are nothing like my mom's, my stepmom's Corgi Chuck. These were some real nightmare hellhounds. The dogs keep pace with the mail truck, tearing chunks out of the driver's legs and arms. Each package he throws out the door is marked by his bloody handprint. He screams in pain and confusion, and this goes on and on until the movie just abruptly ends. There aren't even any credits, which is a pretty bold choice. Is this film a commentary on how our nine to five jobs are killing us or how hostile the modern world is to outdated concepts like mailmen? Perhaps it's merely a statement about the futility of purpose and how no task can ever be really done. There are lots of ways to interpret it, but for now, let's get to the part you're all waiting for. It's score time. Score. I give this film a four out of five only because the actor frequently broke the fourth wall by looking into the camera and shouting at it, like he was shouting at the audience. A little too on the nose for me, but I did enjoy it, and I recommend you check out other films produced by Blessed Pictures. Bike Hard and Coffee Bullet are the only others I found, but this little art house studio certainly knows how to push the boundaries of Western cinema. And a friendly reminder that there will be no new episode next week, as I will be visiting my aunt in Delaware for Thanksgiving. Thanks for listening, all you Brian fans. And remember, we all love movie magic, but don't forget about the you magic. Until next time. Movie Den. Brian's Movie Den. Movie Den. Brian, Brian, Brian. Brian! To talk with Art Bell from East of the Rockies, call toll-free at 800-825-5033. From West of the the brilliant plan was to blow up the nail. <laughs> and she thought I wasn't ready. be better now. Jesse, we need to talk. What did you do? What is causing these tremors? I thought you could tell me. I completed the four rituals just like the board told me to. The astral bleed should have stopped. Look, it has stopped. The nail is repaired. But we have a new problem. My analysis of the nail indicates that it is literally a piece of the astral plane. Or possibly a vessel containing the astral plane. Or both. Either way, right now both dimensions are vibrating at completely incompatible frequencies. The spatial friction they are generating is incalculable. It's going to destroy both planes. I messed this all up. 
Maybe Marshall was right to destroy the nail. I should have left it in pieces. No, then the astral plane would still be leaking in. Sometimes there's no right answer, Jesse. We need more information. No. I need to fix this. Now. I'll just... I'll figure something out. No, we should really make a plan. The tremors are originating from directly below us, but we don't know what... Perfect. I'll head down and take care of whatever's going on. Just do what you can from here. Jesse, you can't just... I have to, Emily. I'm the director. This is on me. See? I told you we were gonna die down here! Bureau researchers do not panic, Dr. Saba. Its composition is remarkably similar to that of material found in the astral plane, but it alters itself between my observations. It's almost as if it doesn't like being examined. So the nail is from the astral plane? Not necessarily. See, if we assume that, we're suddenly facing a lot of new questions. How did something so large get out of the astral plane? How did it get inside the oldest house? Did a threshold bring it in? Did people? Maybe through the motel. Maybe it was always here. Hmm. Doubtful. Have you spent any time looking into the crystals growing around here? As if I could resist. The biggest question is where it comes from. A threshold? Or is it native to the foundation? But if so, why doesn't it grow in the rest of the oldest house? The fact that they return to an earlier state when damaged is severely inconsistent with our reality's adherence to linear time. So either they're A, partially conscious, or B, organic elements that are foreign to and yet influenced by our dimension. The jury's still out. Have you learned anything about the crystals? I have a power that lets me stretch them. Huh. Yep. Any idea what Marshall would be doing down here? That information is on a need-to-know basis, Faden. <laughs> Sorry, I can resist. But honestly, I never had much interaction with Marshall. She only came to me when she was looking for Darling. But this is Helen Marshall we're talking about, the woman who single-handedly dealt with the Bergen Peak AWE. If she's down here, it's been- Well, clearly. I'll see- Take note. Don't be a stranger. I hope I know what I'm doing. That was just the top of the nail? How much deeper does the foundation go? Though it's hard to know how or why. I no longer need tools to detect the house's veins, to hear it breathe. I can feel its blood churning beneath my bare feet. I have added my own illustrations to the walls trying to solve some mystery that the oldest house whispers to me. I have to avoid the it as I do so. They haunt me. I don't blame them. They're just following the pillar's orders. Even poor Adam doesn't seem to recognize me anymore. I've spent a long time contemplating the etchings of the tree and its roots. Did you know this city used to be a forest? I wonder if our oldest house wore a different face back then. Or if it was always here. A 21st century office building since time immemorial. Can a place know the future? Can it change its skin? Can it wander? I always thought the esoteric world was my father's. Place. I finally understand his devotion. That his. Own. <laughs>